Okay, we're going to look at um, a resource called Cloud9. Cloud9 is an IDA or an integrated development environment where you can just have HTML documents and style sheets. Also, you can have it with a database. You can do Ruby on the Rails projects. You can have uh, WordPress uh, projects. Um, so it does lots and lots of different functions and it's sort of all in one integrated window and you can sort of have a virtual server so it's a bit of a playground now you can sign up for a free account so if we come here into pricing um, it has lots of different um, price and structures so you can have with the free one you have a uh, free public workspaces one private workspace and then you know if you go for other ones that there's paid versions for that so you can once you've got to this site and it will be c number nine uh, that's nine dot io and go there and then you can click on and sign up now i've already signed up so i will just sign in Now what will happen the sign up process it will send you an email you need to click on the link and then it will take you back to the site and then you would change the password because it gives you one for you doesn't ask you at the time to sign up and then you would get your password then now once you've gone in here and you're going to have a new workspace is you've got a big workspace button this is the dashboard You've got uh, repositories here where you can bring things in for version control. You've got ones that are shared with you so you can work collaboratively with other um, users of Cloud9. But I'm in workspaces. Now what I will do is create a workspace. So I come over here. Now you've got this panel and you will give it a name and I'll just call this site. So I'll make a site, give it a description and you can have one private repository on the free so you can have a private one or you can have it public i'll leave it public you can clone it from ver a version control so here if you already got a site you can clone it and bring it up now down at the bottom it's got all the different templates for different types of um, production in environments um, it's got html it's got node meteor setting up php apache uh, python um, it's got Ruby in the Rails, it's got C++, it's got WordPress, Ruby, or it just have a blank one. We're going to go for a HTML, and I click Create Workspace. Now, this may take some time. I've found sometimes it's um, happened really quickly. It builds this container in the environment for me. Other times it takes a little bit of time. Also, it's going to be a little bit glitchy because this is working online. It's not a program that's working from... Um, your computer and sometimes it tends to sort of bomb out um, so be prepared be prepared for that now once you come in it's got a sample hello world file and it's got a readme document which is this here uh, you've got lots of menus up at the top here it's got a preview button it's got a run button to run the server um, down at the bottom we have um, these are things to do with terminals or bashes um, so we'll get going and upload some files. So what I will do is go to the file menu and I'm going to upload um, local files. So, so I need to bring up a folder and I've got this folder template of just a free bootstrap template here. So it's a folder and I will upload this. Now this panel just stays here and you'll see it uploads all the files and the folder is up here. So I'll close that down and once I open this up here I will just make it a little bit bigger okay um, and you'll see in here um, that's the folder inside my site um, workspace now I want to move the contents of the um, this bootstrap template and drop it drag and drop it into the site it'll come up and say overwrite the readme that's the existing readme that's fine overwrite it now what it's done now is i've got all my files in here i'll click on hello world and control click that and delete it and that's the one that it had for the setup so these are all my fresh files i've uploaded and they're all in this folder that represents the workspace i've got style sheets in here and i've got html documents and also i've got readme um document on here as well here's the old readme so this is a readme document
Now, if I just close that down, double click on my index, here's my index uh, with all my markup on the HTML document there. And so for example, I wanted to have some style sheets. I go in, open up my style sheets folder and double click on a style sheet and I can toggle between the two with the tabs. Here's my style sheet that I can edit and then I can come back over here and edit this one as well. So you can have any sort of setup. You can change how this um, looks and how the editor can set up with the layout or however you want to have it when you're working on it. I'll just leave it the way it is. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is have a preview of it. So if I click on preview, and say live preview for the index, you will see here, this is the um, preview of the site. Now, if I just um, zoom back out again a little bit on that, um, there we go. So I've zoomed out a bit, so you'll be able to see um, the site in a more of a website way than it was sort of more responsive as a a there you go bring that in bring it out that right so say for example wanted to change some content wanted to change up here now that's up here so if i come and find out where that element is it's here it's in the nav bar um so i come up here and say i change it so i can type in hello uh, world okay now say I want to change this here where it's got start bootstrap and the strap line. Again, if I scroll down here to try and find where that is, here it is um, in the header container. That's why it's nicely semantically marked up so I can find things. And I'll say uh, cloud nine is cool. And then I'll do a strap line and type in here. Uh, this is too easy okay so once I've done that I can actually save it so I can come back up here and say save or I can just use keyboard shortcuts like command and s on an apple or control and s so it's pretty straightforward and then we got it and that's how easy it is to change content and it's the same principle changing images you just change the links making sure the image um, fo folder has the image in there. Now, down at the bottom, here we have um, like a terminal, it's got bash, and this is where we can do some um, version control. So it has git built into it. So if I come along here now and do um, initialize, so if I come along and say, okay, I'm gonna initialize this as a git repository, I will go git uh, in it, there we go, and it says initialize the git, uh, so it's done that for me. And what I will do now is I can now, say for example, I could then add some files, but before I do that, I'll put type in ls and press enter. And here it has it, this has said so all the files that are all in here, all the folders. Uh, once I've done that, I will now, um, add everything so how you add everything to get it ready to commit in the stage environment is i go git uh, add and then i would do the star and press enter return and once i've done that i will commit so i will go git uh, commit and i will put minus m for the message and i'll put added site close off the speech marks there and press enter um, come along and it's done that so I'll just type in clear this is just how you would use the terminal and bring you in now what I'll do is I'll go git log to see what's happened and here it had it so it's given me the um, commit long number there it's registered me as the author that's what I've set things up when I registered and so you know all is well also we can do the other way we go git um, log um, two dashes one line enter and that gives us the short one so it has um, updated that and 
really dead easy to use that. So this is actually under version control as well. So we've got version control going on here. We've got a um, our markup on here. We can use our, our styles on here and it's giving us a preview as we're working on it. Now, once we've done this, we will run it. Now, what you can do is run it as if it's live on the internet. That'll simulate how that works. If I go up to the top, it's got the run button and then it'll open up the run and it'll give you a link here. Now, if I just copy that, I can copy it into another window and come up here and there it is. And that's the site. So the site is here. Um, and what I can do if I go back here and come along and say, okay, I'll type in cloud 100 and then I would go back and then say save. I could preview it, update, refresh it here. I go back uh, and what I do is refresh and it's updated it. So this is really, really useful if you're working on things. And what I can do is go back um, down here to the terminal window or the bash and say I've updated something. So I would go um, uh, git add uh, the asterisk star and that will add everything in the repository. Then I will go git um, commit uh, dash 100 and speech marks I'll say cloud uh, 100 and close off those speech marks uh, press enter and then I will do this I will go git um, log uh, two dashes one line which is all one word which will put oops spelt line right and then we do that so what it's done here you'll see down the bottom it's now got my two commits. So that's how you would simply work on this. Um, you can update your markup, your style sheet, preview here, and then also do um, you know, a live preview um, in a window of how the site is looking, okay? So that's how you would um, set up a basic um, HTML. Now, if I wanted to go back and say, do a WordPress site, I will go back up here to where it's got cloud nine and I'll say, go to your dashboard. Takes me to the dashboard. Here's my site here. Um, I can um, go in here and delete it if I wanted to. I can come in here and go to the cog and I could come along and press delete. I have to retype in what it's called and press delete or I can change it into a private one because I haven't got a private one so I can do that. So I'll just come back out of there like that. Now what I'll do now is create um, another site. So if I, or workspace, if I click here and say create new workspace, this time I'll go for WordPress. I'll give it a name. I'll say WP site up the top. And then I've got the WordPress selected and I'll click create. Now this may take a little bit longer because it's got to create a container and a workspace that also contains a database as well. So it might chunk through it a little bit more um, work than it had with just the HTML. Now once it's done that, you will see if you're familiar with WordPress, um, down the side it's got all the WordPress files are in there. Um, everything's in there, all the includes, the admin, everything is in there. Now, what you will need to do is you will need to actually run it. So you need to run it to update it. You, know, you can, if you wished, um, you know, edit your files here or any of these files, you can come along and go um, index PHP, but obviously how WordPress works, these are all separate files. Now what I would do is click on run project and you'll see it'll start to run down the bottom. I'll just copy that um, URL. I'll come up here and I'll just put it in here. Now, this is familiar with, if you're familiar with setting up WordPress, it's now gonna set it up. So it's running the server. I collect, select the language. It will set it up. Um, I'll come along with my WP 
uh, site um, uh, me me and then it's got the password which has got or you can change if you want I'll leave it like that and you have to put in your email address that's important um, you can have it shown up with search engines that's up to you whatever you want to do and once you've got that all set up um, with the password and everything then you click install and it will install WordPress this might take a little bit of time once it's come in I click login uh, put in the um, username uh, I'll do the password and I'll click login here we go and if I go up to say view the site here's the site in here again if you're familiar with using WordPress this will seem very familiar everything's the same you would set up your site change the appearance um, and work on it any way you want then you can go back and here and if you you're a bit of a WordPress developer or you know what you're doing you can come in here and you can um, change things around you can add new themes and put plugins in here if you want or you can just do it through the dashboard here okay now once that's done I'll just go back to where it's got cloud nine I'll go back to my dashboard now these are my two projects um, on the now if I go back to any of these projects I go back to my original one uh, my site here it's got that and I can click open it and it will open it up again you can always go back to them now what you can do is you'll find um, that you can stop them running so here down the bottom I'll stop it running and it it will just stop that functioning and if I go back to here um, go back to cloud nine oops I go back to my WordPress site and again I can stop that running as well right so you can stop it running at any time and that'll stop it sort of broadcasting it out now if I go back to the dashboard I'll just show you how to delete them so go back to the dashboard say I want to get rid of them I click on here um, I go up to the cog I'd then make sure I knew what the name was its site I click delete Um, it'll ask me to type in the name and its site to make sure it's a fail safe that you don't do this by accident that's gone I click on this one and this time again and you can clone these sites once you've worked on them and bring them down but this one is going to be deleted so it's uh, WP site and I click confirm okay so I've made those sites now I've deleted them I'll just come back out here again. So that's just a simple way of using Cloud9. Really fantastic um, resource um, for playing around and testing things out, working on multiple projects. Really, really useful. You can work on it in this environment and then clone it down and then put it on your own server. So it's really, really good. And it, just try it out, have a play with it, but it's really brilliant.